All right, welcome back, YouTube. God's older back at you. As you see, today I'm coming to you live from inside Matt Black Betty for the first time. My 2023 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack TA edition, as you see in the seat there. Um, this is basically going to be a 500 mile review. I've had the car now for the better part of almost three months, and I got a little over 500 miles, got through the break in period, um, did my first. Oil change tire rotation. You guys saw that in the last video. I put the different lugs on, but <clears throat> we're gonna do a little good, bad, and the ugly. Um, if you watch my first video, you see this is my first um, muscle car, sports car, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, it's it's it's, it's a, to me it's a, it's a muscle car. Um, I haven't had much experience in cars like this. I always always had trucks. So some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about <clears throat> in this video. Um, it's just gonna be like basic stuff. I'm still learning the car, um, so I can't really comment much on the performance. Like I said, still breaking it in. So let's just touch on a few things. Let's start with let's start with the ugly. Um, the only th issue I had so far this truck car so far, and I've seen it's been a problem with a lot. When I bought it, I didn't really pay attention. Um, I looked over the car. I loved it. I bought it. First car wash I did, I noticed the hood wasn't sitting right. Passenger side was um, quite a bit lower than the driver's side so but went back to the dealer they sent me to their body shop and they adjusted that had a car for half a day got the hood adjusted happy with how it looks now um i know it's not be perfect I, i've looked at other ones since and some have a little more gap some are spaced a little different so i'm happy they, they fixed the glaring part that i had an issue with it's still not perfect but it's it's good enough it's good enough perfect for me i know it's um and it's an expensive car and it's it's my baby but it's also, you know, a handmade car and it's a production car. It's not, you know, they're coming off the lines, they're putting the hoods on. So I'm, I'm happy. The other thing they had to fix is one of the moldings on the roof, um, like the rubber stripping, the weather stripping. Um, in the front, once again, in the front, it was it was sticking up. And if it was the other side, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. But the fact that it was the driver's side, front, every time I got in a car, accident, once you see it once, you know, once you see it once, you see it all the time. So they fixed that for me, put a new one on, but the back half sticking up. Now we did this last month. Um, like I said, it's this December 12th now. It was in November, it was cold. I mean, they brought it inside, let it warm up before they did it because oh, you're dealing with double side tape and stuff like that. And it needs to have better temperature to stick. So I'm just gonna chalk that up to, it wasn't the ideal conditions to do that. Um, in the springtime, I'm getting a car ceramic code. I'll see if my guy can can fix that. If he can't, um, I'll take it back to the dealership again on a warmer day, and I'm sure it'll, it'll be done right that time. So that's not a big issue. Um, the car's getting covered. That's why the car's in the garage now. It's tucked in the corner. Battery tender's going on. Car cover's going on, and it's going to sit here for the next three or four months. So not really too worried about getting that fixed now. Um, those are really the only two things so far that I've kind of had a little issues with. Uh, the bad... As you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm big. I mean, I'm, I'm 6'2", I mean, better part of 370 right now. Um, like I said, former retired, semi-retired strongman, super heavyweight, obviously. This car is not built. You can see, I mean, I'm in the seat. I love the seats. I love the bolstering, but it's not made for guys my size. So it's not the most comfortable car, but that's on me, not the car. So I really can't chalk it up to Dodge. I mean, when I looked at cars and I wanted a car, um, I mentioned before, like I was always been a Chevy guy. I really like the Camaros. No way I'm fitting in them. No way I'm fitting in a Mustang. Once I'm in this car, I'm comfortable. Like I said, once when I'm driving, the way I sit, the way I drive, um, I always kind of sit kind of off a little bit. I make myself fit into the car. Um, my goal now that I'm kind of retired from strongman, and I've had knee surgery this year and put weight on, and my goal is to take that weight off. If I can get back down to my fighting weight, um, where I want to be my goal, the car will fit better for me. Um, so that's more on me, not so much the car. The sight lines in this car aren't bad for when you're driving. Straight ahead, good. I love the big windshield, the big hood. Side windows aren't bad, but you can't see shit behind you. When you turn to look, the headrest, the pillars, can't see nothing. I've had an issue already um, coming to my house. I make a left come out, and, there's, and there's, I have a stop, and there's a yield coming the other way. And the first time I come in, I looked. I can't see that 
that them cars coming on a yield roll. Luckily, my wife was with me, and she could see. So that's just something I have to adjust to, like to look before I get to the stop. When I have the visibility at the, at the window, see what's coming and go. Um, when you're passing in a Challenger, this is an everyday driver. It's not in traffic. Um, when I'm passing, I hit it. I go. I pass. I know I pass, guys. But I have the blind spot monitoring and all that stuff in the side stuff. So that's just a little, a little thing on the bad side. The visibility. But from what I've heard, it's a lot better in this than it is in the Mustangs and the, and the Camaros. So um, I'm okay. Once again, just have to adjust your driving style a little bit. I'm used to a big truck with windows all around. And I can see everything. Um, another bad thing, and this doesn't. This is another thing that doesn't really bother me at all. But I know some people daily drive their Challengers, and I do not know how they can do that because there is absolutely no storage anywhere in this car. The two little cup holders in, in the center console are good for like a can of Coke, um, but I have a manual, so I'm always shifting gears, and I can't put nothing there. It does have nice um, holders in the door for like a water bottle, and the only thing a lot of my cars is bottles of water. So they can go in the door, that's not too bad. The center console is, is small. I mean, when I drive, I take it in my pocket, throw it in there, so my phone, my wallet, my keys, all go in there, charging cables, and that's about it, it's full. The little pockets on the side of the consoles are useless. They're not deep enough for nothing. I don't know what they're even supposed to be for other than being decorative. The back seat is hard to get to. If you wanted to put like your backpack, you wanted to put something back there. I mean, I know I'm bigger. I don't got the flexibility. I, mean, I can get back here a little bit, but I mean, there's not much room. I have my seat back almost all the way. The wife has her seat back. So the storage back here is pretty much non-existent. It does have a nice trunk if you're hauling stuff, but that doesn't do you good on your day-to-day. -day. Um, so you're basically putting stuff in the front seat. If you're driving by yourself to work and you have, you know, your, a backpack or a briefcase or a purse or whatever you have, it's basically going to go in the seat on the front floor on the seat. Um, for those of you who can conceal carry, there's nowhere to put that. I always like to like take my, you know, take my gun, throw it in the console or something like that. Um, can't do that in this. There's nowhere to put it. So... As a daily driver, I don't know how guys do it. It just it's to me it's as far as the car handling and the gas mileage, just I mean it's, it's what it is. But there's nowhere to put nothing, and I don't I don't care because I bought this car as a, a toy, a Sunday driver so to speak. Go to car shows. I don't I don't want it cluttered. I don't want it to be cluttered. Even like the charging cable. A lot of times my wife will leave hers out so she'll feed it through the side of the little hole so she can have it charged up while she's on it. I put it back all the time. I don't want like no exposed cables, no nothing in this car. I just want it to be nice and clean looking. So for me, not an issue. But for those that uh that daily drive, I don't know how they do it. But um I say that's basically it for so far the um the ugly and the, the little bit of the bad. And there's nothing major. Um like we fixed the issues with the stripping in the hood, you know, not a problem with that. Um like I said, the, the the interior stuff isn't a big deal for me. So let's get to the good. And there's a lot of good I love on this car. I mean, I I love the styling of this car. I, I love the fact that Dodge really hasn't changed it. If you go back and look at through like the um, especially the Camaros, it seems every year they're changing stuff. So it's still the same car. The Mustangs make big changes. Um, the Challenger, so you could say good or bad, they haven't changed. Like this style, I guess 2018 to the 2023s, they really haven't changed anything in the car. A little bit performance-wise, and they beef up their, their higher-end cars. But they pretty much left the RTs and the scat packs and stuff. They pretty much left them alone. Um, so it's nice. You know, the cars look the same. They all kind of look similar. The only downfall is it's hard to tell what year somebody's is, if it's a... You know, an RT is it? An, you know, is it a Scat Pack? Is it a, a GT? An SXT? They all look so similar, unless you know the fine details with, you know, maybe the script in the front on the badging or, or the different hood or the, the different wheels and stuff like that. But I like the fact that the car really hasn't changed. I love the hood, um, that big hood. I mean, you know what it looks like. But you know, with this, with mine being a TA, it's the flat black mat, which I love. The big hood scoop. I just love the the sight picture out the front window. That was probably my biggest reason for wanting the Scat Pack TA is I just wanted that flat back hood. I, I know you can get other cars and stuff, but to me, I just, I love that hood. So 
Now, the looks are my favorite on the good. The performance, like I said, I really haven't got to do much with it yet. Um, as you noticed, prior videos, I'm still on a drive manual, so I haven't pushed myself yet, and I haven't pushed a car because through the 500-mile braking period, uh, that's just finished up there. You know, I wanted to get that done. I've opened it up a little bit, not much. Haven't tried any 0-60s, to 60s, haven't had anything crazy yet. So <clears throat> we're getting there with that. So performance-wise, I really can't comment too much on that. I do like um, the feel of the car, the sound of the car. You can tell when it has a performance. So once I get to that point, I'll definitely give you a little more take on um, on how that's working for me. But for now, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The um, the layout in the interior, I like it. It's simple. It's not super flashy like some cars. I mean, it has a nice, you know, eight inch screen, digital, everything's digital. It has, the, you know, the gauges for the RPMs and the and the, and the, um, the speed are, you know, gauges, but it has everything digital also. I like the layout. I feel it's simple. I feel it's kind of a throwback to the older cars. I have just what I need. You know, some cars throw so much stuff in there and they look like spaceships and they're futuristic. And if you're trying to have a muscle car, it's a throwback to the muscle cars of the, the heyday of the, the 60s and the 70s. Those weren't spaceships. They didn't have all this fancy stuff. So I feel with this, I feel it's simple enough. It has, you know, a few buttons. Like I said, all I have is a few buttons, that, you know, the control for the, the climate control stuff and the radio controls. And then, you know, a few, few side buttons. So I, I really like the simplicity of it. I like the layout of it. As if I was just a little bit smaller, it'd be more comfortable. Um, I went, <clears throat> I got no sunroof. I need the extra headroom a little bit. So <clears throat> I feel, I don't know. I, the sunroofs, I've had sunroofs in prior vehicles. The wife has them in her cars. I mean, like, we never use them. Maybe maybe the vent option a little bit. So sunroof is definitely something I didn't want. Um, just like for the car, I wanted hood pins. I don't have hood pins. It wouldn't have been a deal breaker if this car had a sunroof. I still would have bought it. Um, just like I bought it without the hood pins because I didn't build this car. Um, <clears throat> if I did, it would have exactly what I want. But being the fact that I find it on the lot in a dealership, somebody else had actually built it because it's um, on my window sticker. If, if it's personally built, which is kind of neat, I didn't really, not, really notice. It says built for or whatever. So the guy that ordered this car for whatever reason backed out out of it. So I got his car. I should try to look him up and see <laughs> see if he's on Facebook or see if he's on uh, some of the Dodge forums to see why he decided not to buy the car, whether he finds something else or couldn't meet with the financing or stuff like that. But maybe why see why he chose the options. I find it the exact same car that I have. It was in Maryland, and I'm in Ohio when I was looking. And um, <clears throat> I considered <laughs> going down there or maybe trying to get a little price work going on. Uh, it's funny. I've noticed now, just watching the video now, that... It seems the prices are coming down. They're starting to offer discounts because they can't get rid of them because they were asking so much for so long um, that they're offering discounts. I got mine a little under, under MSRP. I'm happy with that. Um, st it was stickered at like 61.4. I got it for like 58. Um, I'm happy with it. I could have waited a little bit, but the car might not have been there. Like I said, this this car checked like nine or ten boxes for me. So I'm happy. Yeah, but I'd like to save a little bit more money. But when you're talking about spending sixty grand on a car, to me, saving two or three thousand dollars, you know, on a deal or rebate or something like that, isn't that big of a deal. Um, you're only talking a few bucks a month on your payment or, or whatnot. So, but let's get back to um, the good. Like I said, I've been trying to think of stuff that I really love about this car, the looks, the performance so far. I love the layout of it. I I I, just, I love the way this car looks. Whenever I see, I, I notice now. Whenever I see challengers, even the wife. We, we look, we turn our heads like to see, okay, what kind is that? What one is that? And I'm hoping people are doing it with mine. I know we were out one day um, just going for a ride. There was a couple of kids. It was, it was after school when there were kids like, you know, waiting by the by the bus stop or whatever across the street. And they were kind of like cheering. And I didn't realize it. And like I said, had I, I would have gunned a little bit for it, goose, to, you know, give them a little, little of the exhaust. Um, but I know, I hopefully that the, the fact that I like looking at these cars, Hopefully, people are looking at my car and seeing the same thing. Like, man, that's a nice looking car. It's a good looking car. I'm really looking forward to next year and, you know, doing some car shows and some car cruises and that kind of stuff and getting out to a little bit, meeting other you know, people with Dodges because there's a lot I want to do to this car. Um, I want to change the exhaust. I want to change probably the shifter. Some little cosmetic stuff. I want to make the car more my own, personalized. You've seen that personalized already with the license plate and with the, um, the lug nuts we put on. But I want to do a lot more. 
I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go crazy. Like I don't want to like crazy it up. I just want to do small little accent stuff, possibly bring out some color. Um, <clears throat> just make it more my own. So when someone sees a car, they know oh, that's that's Godzilla's car. So I'm looking to do that this year with with car shows. Seeing some other people, seeing what they've done to their cars, hearing what their cars sound like. That's the biggest thing on the exhaust. I have an idea what I want. Probably gonna go with a full cap back system. But there's two or three that I'm looking at. And they're expensive, and before I spend that kind of money, I want to hear them. So I'm hoping to get out to the track, get out to the shows, hear some cars, see what they have in them. Because there might be something that I don't know about or something different that I never considered may just sound so good to me. Um, <clears throat> the wife the wife doesn't want it to be super loud. I like loud. I don't need crazy loud. My car in the garage is like, it's an attached garage. Right, right behind the garage is basically um, the back bedroom, which is the wife's like, changing room and then our bedroom and the other day when i pulled the car out she's like it was loud and that's the stock exhaust so basically no matter what i put it's going to be loud in the house where i live i think the biggest thing on exhaust is where i live if you have a super loud exhaust and you live in like a call to zach you live in a neighborhood you're going to be that asshole starting you know in the morning scare wake everybody up i'm raw i live in the country so like the only person i'm gonna wake is me and my wife and usually when we're going for rides i'm not taking this car to work at five in the morning She's with me. If it's loud, it's loud. Who cares? I leave the house. Who cares? I wake the cows up. No big deal. So, but I'm going to wrap it up there. Like I said, it's getting a little bit long, getting a little bit short-winded here talking about this car because obviously I love this car. Um, it's my baby. But, yeah, it's 500-mile review. Had it about three months. It's in storage now for the rest of the year. So, we'll see what happens. Next year, I pull it out. Um, it could be ceramic coating, windows getting tinted. I know I'm doing the sides. I don't know if I'm going to throw the back window or not. Um, maybe a little bit thin on that. Um, what else do we have? That's all we have in the works for next year, I guess, so far. So far. Um, like I said, shifter, that's the thing too, the shifter, everybody says the shifter was kind of, kind of garbage. You should need to go with a different shifter. I don't have enough experience with driving these kind of cars to know if this is good or bad. I'm getting used to it. I'm learning it. Whether I'm, I'm learning a bad shifter, learning a good shifter, we'll, we'll see. I like the looks of it. Um, We'll see where that goes, but definitely exhaust is going to be a change. Maybe wheels. I mean, wheels is one, one of the best ways to customize your car, but I like these wheels. Just they all have the same wheels, so we'll see where the wheels go. But thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me. I uh, go here, like I said, the good, the bad, the ugly of the car. Um, mainly, I still I love this car. I'm glad I bought it. So happy. The wife loves it. She's happy I bought it. And really didn't get to enjoy it. I had it party out five or six times this year. So next year is going to be the year of me driving my car all year. As soon as I get it, as soon as it comes out of storage, when the weather gets nice, this car is not going to see salt. It's not going to see snow. It's not to see rain. Weather right now, it's still nice, but it's going to turn to shit pretty soon. Um, so the car will hopefully be out sometime in March or April. So thanks for listening. Matt Black, Betty, thanks you. Uh, keep checking out. You know, you do if you like the video, like it, subscribe, do all that shit. You, you guys know on YouTube what to do with it, how to help me out. So keep getting more videos. This will probably be the last one for a few months. So until springtime, Godzilla out.